Here are some tips for building a set for your brick film. You don't have to follow all of them, just pick the ones that you find useful. People often say, only build what the camera can see, but the only way you can know what the camera will see is if you plan your shots. Sometimes the camera might stay in one place for a whole scene, but it's more common to use several angles, including some close-up and some wide-angle shots. If you don't plan, you won't know how big your set needs to be, or which angles it will be seen from. As well as planning or storyboarding your shots, it's a good idea to have your camera and stand handy while you're building the set so that you can check how things look on the screen as you go along. As you plan where you'll place the camera, it's a good idea to also plan the movement of your minifigures or vehicles or whatever else you might have moving around during the scene. For example, if something is going to fly, your set might need to be very tall or you might decide to point the camera at the flying object from above or below. If you're going to have minifigures moving around, make sure you have a clear path for them, with studs for them to walk on, unless you're ready to take on the tricky job of animating them walking on a smooth surface. If your minifigure needs to walk diagonally, consider creating a diagonal path for them to follow to make it easier when you're animating. If you don't like how this looks, you can conceal it by making sure the feet are out of shot. Make sure you fill the screen. Don't leave gaps around the edges. If you're only able to build a small set, move the camera closer, so long as this doesn't cause your subject to go out of focus. Don't worry about what the camera can't see. Remember, you're not designing a Lego set or building a My Own Creation. The set for your brick film will only be seen from the angles that you choose to show it from. So usually, it doesn't matter if it looks terrible from the back or even from the side. This means that you don't need to use exactly the right bricks, they can stick out at the back or have clips, stickers or studs on the rear side, no one will ever see. But as I said earlier, make sure to turn on your camera now and then to check that your set looks right on the screen. And although you don't need to build things that the camera won't see, it's better to build a little extra in each direction just to be on the safe side. One of the most annoying things that can happen when animating is having your set collapse halfway through a scene, sending everything flying out of position. It's pretty much impossible to get everything back exactly where it was. To avoid this frustrating scenario, make your set stable and strong and attach it securely to your desk. It's true that some sets are very delicate by nature, but if you do have to build something fragile, don't be afraid to cheat a little bit by reinforcing it with hidden pieces of tape or sticky tack. Don't forget that when you start animating, you're going to need to get your fingers in to move minifigures and other things around. Try to build in this access from the very beginning. If possible, leave plenty of space around the areas where your minifigures are going to walk, and don't put any delicate structures close to where you're going to need access. If you do, they're sure to break just at the wrong moment. To make access easy, you might consider having whole walls that lift off or open out. Lighting is a really important aspect of your brick film, and building lights into your set can make it look really professional. You can buy kits to light up your buildings, or you can use individual LEDs or fairy lights. The difficult part is to get the light in position without the lead showing, but if you plan this before you start building your set, you can put the lights in first and then build around them. Even if you don't want to actually build lights into your set, it pays off to consider where the light will be coming from and to build in gaps or windows for light to shine through as needed. You may not have much Lego and you might not have professional equipment, but you will be able to find things lying around that you can use to make a good set. Coloured card, cereal boxes, a plank of wood, an old chopping board, a dinner tray, some sand from the local beach, mud, rocks or leaves from your garden, any of these can be used in your set. Personally, I prefer to make everything out of Lego, but just remember that you always have a choice. As I mentioned in my basic brick film set tutorial, it's best to start out by creating the base and back for your set, and then to add the essential functional features that are needed for the action in your story. Once this is done, consider what level of detail is best for your set. Sometimes you might not want any detail at all, for example, if your brick film is about a sandstorm in the desert. 
but often the level of detail is what takes the set from being good to being great. If you're not sure what details to add, look up real life photographs of the kind of scene you're creating to get inspiration. But remember, when you're putting the details in to not get in the way of your essential functional features of the set, don't block the path of the minifigures or vehicles, and leave space for your hands to get in without knocking things over. The colours you choose for your set have a big influence on how it looks overall. Don't just pick bricks out at random and build with them. For the church in my Christmas special, I used only sand coloured bricks for the walls, because I wanted it to look traditional. For the bird hide in my Lego bird watching video, I used almost exclusively brown bricks, because bird hides are usually made of wood. The colours you use can also help to set the mood for your video, or tell you something about a character. For my granny stop motion, I built the walls using a mixture of different greys, with some black and browns as well, to make the house look dark, derelict and neglected. If I'm going to be using several sets for a brick film, I usually make each one on a different base plate, and then move them onto my desk one at a time when I need them. But I also have lots of buildings available that can be slotted in to use for different scenes as needed. These are useful for providing backgrounds, and can easily be moved in as required. If you have enough LEGO, I recommend having several modular units that you can use in this way, because it can save you from having to build everything from scratch for every scene. These can either be sets built from LEGO instructions, like these creator houses that I use, or your own creations, whether they are houses, or bits of forest, a hill, a cliff, a cave, a river, a train station, a factory, anything that you think you might use regularly in your animations. Another thing to consider in set building is that sometimes you might want to move your background instead of moving a minifigure or vehicle. In the advert scene in my Voldemort video, for example, I created the illusion that the lady on the bike was moving very quickly. In reality, the buildings behind her were being moved instead. If you want to use this effect, it's best to decide before you build your set, as you need to make sure that everything that is in the shot can be moved. I avoided having to move the base plates simply by positioning the camera so that the ground couldn't be seen. When you're building your set, think about depth. The depth of your shot is created by the distance between the objects closest to the camera and those furthest away. You can think of your shot as having three areas, the foreground, the midground, and the background. Your action could take place in any of these areas, and it's up to you how much you build in each of these areas, but be aware as you build that your shot will have more depth if you build things in all three. You don't always want your shot to have a lot of depth, for example, if your characters are walking through thick fog, there won't be much depth to the shot. But as a general rule, shots tend to look more interesting with greater depth to them, and when there's detail included in the foreground, midground, and background. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully there was something useful in it that can help you for your brick film set building. Please do check out the other tutorials on my channel. And if you're not already a Gold Puffin subscriber, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be first to see all of the new videos. Thanks for watching.